This is Cruise Radio. I cruise a lot and I always sail with travel insurance. You should too. Get a free quote today at tripinsurance.com. Here we go. Broadcasting from the tripinsurance.com studios in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Cruise Radio. Hey, how's it going? Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Cruise Radio. Very happy to have you here. A review of Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas this week with Sherry Griffiths from Cruise Tips TV. We know her, we love her, and she'll be here in just a little bit to give her full comprehensive review of the world's largest cruise ship. Well, until January of next year, the icon of the seas will step in its shoes. Uh, Before we get to Sherry, just a big overwhelming thank you. It was very humbling, everyone who stepped up to bat for the Cruise Radio Extra Patreon feed. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Words cannot describe um, just how much this means and helps the whole overall business out. Um, If you're curious to what I'm talking about, it's patreon.com slash cruise radio, and you'll find some unedited interviews there from cruise line executives and things we've done in the past. So if you'd like to check that out, patreon.com slash cruise radio. And now to our interview with Sherry Griffiths from Cruise Tips TV. We always enjoy when Sherry from Cruise Tips TV stumbles in to talk to us about a cruise. Hello, Sherry. (laughs) Hey, Doug. Thanks for having me back. You are on a seven-night sailing aboard Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas, which is currently the largest cruise ship in the world. You hit a perfect day, St. Thomas and St. Martin. So we're going to take a step back, as we always do. Give us some pre-cruise thoughts. What made you want to take this seven-nighter? You're out in the uh, California area. Yeah, curiosity. You know, we loved Harmony of the Seas a few years ago and just wanted to see what it was like to be on the world's largest cruise ship. We cruise with a 14 year old boy. So, you know, perfect day. Coco Key is his idea of heaven and Royal Caribbean ships are his idea of heaven. So we kind of wanted to do this as a cool family trip and just check out all the ship had to offer, see how it compared to Harmony and um, fly over to Florida. We, We have a really easy time flying from California over to Orlando. It's just a nice quick shot over the, the flights are really cheap. So we went for it. Very good. So did you do any pre-cruise time in the Orlando area before your sailing? No, we just did one night with Go Port at a hotel kind of near the airport and then just took the bus in the morning of. So not really. Gotcha. So you make your way to the terminal there at Port Canaveral. I've never actually embarked a, a Royal, on a Royal Caribbean ship from the terminal they're using for Wonder of the Sea. So how was that embarkation process? It's a beautiful terminal. The parking lot's a little bit crowded, congested coming in, especially if you're parking there. But once you get in the terminal, huge, expansive, friendly staff, and we moved through lightning fast, never sat down, probably on the ship in less than 15 minutes, all told. Gotcha. Now, were they like, is there a lot of pre-cruise stuff you're doing to, to expedite that process? Like, are you doing photo uploads and everything? So just kind of scan, 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 you're on the ship? Yeah. Yeah, you do it all. You upload a photo in advance. And you check in on the app, online. It's all pretty quick. And you even do your health questionnaire online. And then they walk you up to a representative when you get there just to double check everything. So they're going to ask, hey, any changes to your health questions from when you entered them in the app? And they also review your photo and make sure that it's acceptable for their standards. And then that's it. And then they basically just kind of point you off and tell you to walk on the ship. So you mentioned you've been on Harmony of the Seas before. So you walked on Wonder of the Seas. What was your first impression on this one? So beautiful. You know, you walk in in the Royal Promenade and everything's right there. The robotic bar is right there. They have that classic car sitting right in the middle of the promenade. And it definitely had that shiny new new ship look and smell right Mm -hmm. there. Lots of activity. It was really a bustling cruise. We were at full capacity, so you you felt that immediately, noticed that immediately. Really similar to Harmony, though, just in wow factor. You know, you're right there with the robotic yeah. bar, and it's a it's a beautiful way to start your cruise. What kind of stateroom did you book for this seven night sailing, and what were your thoughts of it throughout the week? We booked a deck eight balcony all the way aft. So we're talking like the aftmost balcony on the side of the ship. So not facing apt right next to an aqua theater suite. Mm -hmm. It was great. It was really nice. Tons of storage. The cooler slash refrigerator actually worked and kept things cold, which is nice. Not always the case on a Royal Caribbean ship. 
again, so much closet space, so much storage, really exceeded expectations in the storage department. Bathrooms are nice. Um, They have magnetic shower doors, which are handy. And same thing with a bathroom door. It's kind of magnetic. Mm -hmm. Just really well laid out. We had some weird cabin noise. We had some kind of a thumping sound coming out of... um, out of the walls in the middle mornings, but we let the guest services team know about it so they could check it out. And other than the, you know, the walls being kind of thin on these ships where you hear every sort of door slam, it's Mm -hmm. just kind of standard for this class of ship. I don't know why it was a great cabin, a little too far aft for us. Mm -hmm. Um, we usually enjoy the walk, but when you're on a ship that's 1100 feet long, you really felt it. So I think I would have put myself a little closer to midship in hindsight. And there was also some noise, um, from the aqua theater at night. You would actually hear the shows from that cabin. So a little bit of loud music, but you know, certainly didn't um, ruin anything for us. So I'm curious, did you make friends with your neighbors to go check out their aqua theater suite? (laughs) No, we didn't. They were so sweet. I think they must have gotten some sort of an upgrade. I don't know if it was a Royal Up upgrade, Mm -hmm. but they, when they first got to their cabin, I heard them talking, going like, wow, what is, what is this (laughs) suite? Like they seemed surprised themselves that they were in such a huge suite, but no, Mm -hmm. we did it. Uh, We thought about it. Thought about knocking on the door and watching the shows from there. Real right. no. <laughs> uh, cool. So let's talk about dining on this seven night cruise. We'll start at the top at the Windjammer Marketplace. What were your thoughts in there? This is where I think things kind of fell short for us this week. It was jammed up there. It was really crowded. And you know, I know that that's typical, but what had happened on the ceiling is that the Solarium Bistro was chartered out for a private event for the week. So you couldn't, there was no overflow for buffet dining for breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the Solarium Bistro. So everybody was headed up there and it was just at really full capacity. So we actually never ate there. We would go and try to find a seat and kind of turn around and walk out, which is kind of a disappointment. But since the dining room experience was so good, it all kind of worked out. Very good. Did they have uh, like, Gosh, I'm trying to think the last time it was even. I think the last Oasis class ship I was on was Harmony of the Seas back in 2016. And I'm trying to picture how the how it was set up. Was it like a bunch of islands throughout there? Yes, okay. mm-hmm. it's been a bunch of islands, and they've actually redesigned the Windjammer mm-hmm. on this ship to be, in theory, to be a lot more effective for managing the crowds. It's kind of like a horseshoe shape, which is interesting, with a lot of seating sort of pressed back. But yeah, the stations were great. Visually, absolutely beautiful. Food selection was awesome. We just didn't really get a chance to hang out up there because we couldn't find any seating. But yeah, lots gotcha. of islands and different places that you can you can go and try things out. They even have like a little kid station that's kind of low down with little, you know, kid food on it and all the standard stuff, the salad stations, the dessert stations. They even have like a bakery. They have an international station, just more than you can even mm-hmm. ever imagine. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, how about the main dining room? What time dining did you have and how was your experience in there throughout the week? We had my time dining for the whole week and we actually had an excellent experience. Uh, Last time we were on Royal Caribbean, it was a little bit meh for us in the dining room. The food was just okay. The service was kind of okay and the pacing was a little hit and miss. But they've instituted those new main dining room menus, which I know are getting mixed reviews. Mm -hmm. So we tried the new main dining room menus six out of seven nights. And we actually thought they were really good. Um, The service was super prompt. They would always ask us if we were trying to get to a show. We had bar drinks within minutes every night when we sat down. And we kind of turned it into a little bit of a, you know, traditional dining situation we just told the staff hey we you know kind of want to come at the same time and like yeah no problem just do it come at this time and we'll seat you in the same place and if your table's not available we'll put you as close as possible to that table and we had a great experience everything was awesome food was really good service was top notch now you mentioned six out of seven nights you were in there this seventh night or the night you weren't in there did you do like a specialty restaurant or anything we did we did wonderland Mm -hmm. on the last night And we actually did the Mason Jar, the Southern food place, on the first day, but for brunch. Mm -hmm. So right when we boarded the ship, we had booked a reservation there for midday and just actually showed up early. We got on the ship so early that we decided not to wait for our 1215 reservation. Showed up about 1145 and they seated us and it was fantastic. So good. So worth the money. And again, just excellent service in all of the specialty dining and main dining areas. So Mason Jar, that's like their take on like Southern food, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that a la carte or a package thing? 
It's um, it's a package, so it's a flat rate. It's mm-hmm. less expensive for brunch than it is for dinner, and you can order a couple of appetizers, a couple of entrees and desserts, and they even have their own cocktail menu over there. They have a PB&J Old Fashioned. They have a drink called the Thar from Manhattan, all kinds of special things with kind of a southern flair, and the food is phenomenal. The drinks are phenomenal. It's just I think it was a super smart move on their part. Yeah, for sure. And then how about how was Wonderland? What was your experience in there like? The experience was great. You know, it's just the fun, whimsical thing that you come to expect. The costumes, the layout, the view of the boardwalk from that area is just phenomenal. The food was okay. You know, it's not, I don't really think that you go there expecting gourmet food. Um, I had a short rib as a uh, entree and that was really tender and great, but it wasn't, you know, it's not like going to chops where, you know, you're just going to get an incredible steak and have like a culinary experience. It's more, it's more about the experience and it's great for kids. So many kids there the night we were there. I mean, almost every table had little children there. So I think, you know, if you're cruising with family and you're wondering if Wonderland is just for adults, absolutely not. You can take the kids. They have special menus for them They bring them all kinds of really cool um, starters and entrees, including like a fruit salad that's got like a big old poof of cotton candy on it in the beginning. So a lot of wow factor for both the adults and the kids. I know it's like Alice in Wonderland is like a Disney thing, but are there any kind of plays on that? Kind of. Yeah, you you sort of have the... The first, the the motif, right, when you walk in, has that kind of look. There's this door that you can walk through that kind of mimics going into Wonderland. And then the servers are wearing kind of Alice in Wonderland-ish clothing. Like they might have a a big watch hanging from their vest, right? And this is the funny thing. When we were there, there were actually guests who were dressed up in like full Alice in Wonderland costumes (laughs) going there to eat. Like it was the coolest thing. They were, they were all decked out. So I, I don't know if that's a thing. I've never seen that before, but you, you definitely get the vibes. So no Mad Hatter running around or a rabbit saying, I'm late, I'm late, no. I'm late. No. no, but a little set, a little taste of it for sure. <laughs> gotcha. I'm late, I'm late. <laughs> so uh, how about other oh. dining? Like if you uh, ate along the promenade or anything by the pool or uh, like the yeah. Loco Fresh, anything like that? Yep. Okay. We didn't do all loco fresh on this one, but we definitely ate at Park Cafe a lot. So our balcony cabin was on deck eight, which is where Central Park is. And so, you know, Park Cafe is really convenient to that area. And when you're on a ship that's that big, I think you kind of find a dining establishment that's close to your room. If you're up high, you might go to the buffet. But for us, Park Cafe was everything. So we, of course, got the Royal Kummelweck, that roast beef sandwich that they have. Really enjoyed, too, in the Park Cafe, the Build Your Own Salad Bar. Mm -hmm. I had never taken advantage of that before, but we did it several times on this one. You don't have to touch the handles. They make the salad for you, put some dressing on it, and you have, like, this just nice civilized meal. Super good grab-and-go for breakfast, too. They had, like, fruit to grab-and-go. You could get a breakfast sandwich, pastries, hot oatmeal. Um, During the day, they would have hot soups. They also have really decent coffee there for the morning. So no espresso drinks. But if you want to just go get a nice piping hot cup of coffee, I found the quality to be really nice. And then they have waters, tea, juices, lemonade, all that too. So that's where we spent most of our time. We also did Sorrento's Pizza, which was awesome. Um, Pizza was really good, better than I remembered. And our son kind of made it his late night after dinner spot. He loved that. And then we also did a quick bite and some coffee at Cafe Promenade in the Royal Promenade. I don't even remember what we ate there, though, but I remember it being good. Does this ship have a Johnny Rockets? Yes, it does have a Johnny Rockets, which is back on the boardwalk. So all the way back on the boardwalk, kind of down at the base of the Ultimate Abyss. And um, they have the free breakfast there, too. So you can take advantage of the free breakfast if you can get a seat. And then, of course, lunch and dinner, there's an upcharge. You said if you can get a seat, is it pretty popular through the week? A little bit, a little popular on our sailing. Um, we didn't try it because every time I walked by, it looked pretty jammed. But I think if you were to get there at an opening time, you'd have absolutely no problem. And it'd probably be worth it. They have standard stuff, omelets, eggs that looked pretty high quality. Okay. So how was the entertainment on this sailing? It was awesome. They do such a good job. So they had the intense aqua theater show. That was great. Lots of showings of that. First night got canceled because of weather. It was 
in the 40s in Orlando, so cold wow. the night that we left, and high winds. There was just no way that show was going to happen. So they just moved everybody to a future um, showing of that, and it was really good. I kind of liked the fine line on Harmony of the Seas just a little bit better. My husband and I were joking that intense just isn't really as intense, which is kind of funny. Um, they also have the ice show on this one. I think it's called 365 Seasons on Ice. Loved it. Super modern um, contemporary music, which was great. We also saw the stage show called Effectors to Crash and Burn. And that one's like a kind of like a comic book, you know, heroes and villains thing. It's great. Good for all ages. Um, my son sat through it. That'd be like saying you sat through it, Doug. We know how you are with shows, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> saying a lot. It was good. It was great uh, visuals, entertaining, really clever. That was the only, <laughs> that was the only stage show we did that we didn't do anything else other than those three. Any um, like comedy shows or how was the music around the ship? Like that kind of vibe. Yeah, no comedy shows for us, but the live music is amazing and it's everywhere. They had, I believe it was like, it's like I can't remember what it's called, but this TikTok famous country trio up at the Mason Jar that everyone just loved. Going to the Mason Jar bar where the music is playing is a thing at night. It's just, it just kind of has its own personality up there and you can go enjoy your drink package and have all those amazing cocktails up there and enjoy that music. There was live music on the promenade. There was live music by the pool. It was everywhere. So if you are a live music lover, the ship rocks. And how was the ship on sea days as far as crowds and congestion? It was jammed. The pools and the buffet were so busy on this one. Um, again, super full capacity. I think we were at or close to 7,000 people. So you really felt it. You even felt it in the promenade. Um, if, unless you were up early in the morning, you were definitely going to be feeling it. Uh, so those, those top deck activities were pretty busy. Like the mini golf, for example, even though it was free, it was really busy moderate lines for things like the zip line and the flow rider, nothing crazy. It's not as if you couldn't do the, you know, the flow rider or the zip line. Those are fine. If you're willing to wait a few minutes, water slides, no big deal, a little bit of lines, but nothing crazy, but just in general, quite a bit of crowding. It's the pools that where you really saw it, you know, you'd mm -hmm. have like 13 kids crammed into one hot tub yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even the solarium was really busy. Every time we went in there, it was like pretty much every chair was full and, you know, you, you felt it. You felt like you were on a ship with 7,000 people. How about the, um, the casino as far as like the smoke situation, if you were walking through it or around it? Yeah, there was a bit of a problem on deck four with casino smoke um, flowing into the My Time dining room. In other areas, you didn't really feel too forced to walk through the casino. Maybe I think if you were going to Studio B, there was a little bit of that. But it was really just an issue of it wafting into the dining room foyer. So if you picture the dining room on deck four just basically bleeds right into the casino, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got the my time folks who have to go sort of queue up because they don't necessarily have a reservation. So the line is sort of stretching back to the casino and that smoke is just filling that foyer. And the thing that concerned us is that the employees were – you could tell they were uncomfortable. They were coughing some nights. This is just on that single deck, though. I mean, this dining room is three decks high. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the other decks, you're totally fine. It's just that deck four area. Other than that, I didn't notice the casino smoke um, like leaching out into any other areas. Gotcha. So let's talk about the ports of call on this seven night sailing. You did St. Martin, St. Thomas and Perfect Day. So I'll go ahead and give us the first one and a highlight and we'll move to the next one. Sounds good. Yeah. St. Martin was beautiful, really nice weather, a little quick rainstorm in the morning, but we did rainforest adventures, which is the thing where you go and you take the chairlift up the mountain and you do some zip lining and then you take the big, crazy uh, flying Dutchman zip line down. That's super fun. Always a great thing to do. And then went and had some lunch over in Simpson Bay, got back on the ship. St. Thomas, unfortunately, we didn't get off the ship. It was a 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. port call, and we were just too tired. So we unfortunately decided to stay on the ship. And that was actually kind of nice because, you know, that's where you got to take advantage of the ship being a little more quiet. So kind of made it into a little sea day there. Mm -hmm. And then perfect day, we did the same thing we always do. We're kind of creatures of habit. We did the Thrill Water Park passes. And there were two ships in that day. I think it was us and Freedom of the Seas. So we expected it to be extremely crowded, but it wasn't. You know, you had maybe 15-minute lines for some of the best 
water slides, but it was really manageable. And there are so many places to sit in the water park. I think, you know, people worry about needing to get a cabana. You definitely don't need a cabana. You can find um, shade and comfortable chairs. We had nobody even sat anywhere near us the whole entire day. It was really weird. Um, we sat kind of down at the the base of the Daredevil's Peak water slides and had a great time. Good food, drink package works out there as well, which is so nice, right? Like you you can go to bars everywhere and take advantage of your drink package. So we stayed out there as long as we could and then walked over and went for a little swim at one of the beaches. And that was great. And um, it was beautiful. Glad we did it. I think that was all the ports on this one. So you mentioned you did the uh, kind of the rainforest thing over in St. Martin. Was that through the cruise line or did you find that on your own? No, you can do it on your own. You can take a cab or get there however you want, but you can make reservations on the website and they make sure that you're in and out of there in the proper amount of time. You don't need a huge amount of time there, maybe three hours max. Um, you know, if you want to spend a little more time, you can chill up the bar at the very top and you can actually see other islands from the top, which is beautiful, but it, it's easy to do on your own if you'd like. Okay, cool. It's good to know there. Yeah. So you make your way back to Port Canaveral. How was Debark? Debark was good. It wasn't quite as smooth as Embark. Getting off the ship, if you were doing the self-assist, not really a backlog when you're walking off the ship, but once you got into the terminal, you kind of had that people snaking thing going mm -hmm. down. Um, but they did the, I don't even know what it's called, Doug. What is the thing where they, you don't have to really show your passport like anymore? The facial recognition. Leave? Yeah, that was so cool. So that made it faster, but you could tell, you know, that was a time again when you felt how many people were on the ship. But again, maybe 20 to 30 minutes getting off the ship from the time that we, you know, left our room to the time that we were on the go port bus to get out to the airport. So it was, it was pretty smooth. Not bad. So um, any first time tips to offer someone sailing wonder of the seas? For sure. Definitely take advantage of the mason jar because it's unique to this ship and try the cocktails if you have the drink package there. That's one tip. Another tip, if you bought the Royal Refreshment Package, so that's the drink package without the alcohol. So it's not the soda package. It's not the alcohol package. It's the middle one. That package actually works at the Vitality Cafe, which is the spa. There, you can get fresh squeezed juices and smoothies with your Royal Refreshment mm. or the Deluxe Beverage Package. And those suckers, Doug, those things are like seven or eight bucks a pop. Oh, wow. So it's great. My husband would get his entire Royal Refreshment Package drink value there every day. He'd get usually like two juices and a smoothie. It's like mm -hmm. 25 bucks. So get your money's worth. Go down there. You can order a custom juice. You can have it done however you want. You can have beets and ginger, lemon, whatever. And they have smoothies as well. So I think those are those are the main tips. Um, also, speak up on this ship. If you have a problem, go to guest services. <laughs> if it's like a problem with the app and you're having issues with show reservations, if you have a problem with your room, just make sure you speak up. They're super responsive and they really want people to be happy. And we did that a few times and we were so glad that we did. Um, same thing in the dining room. Talk to the head waiter. Talk to your staff if there's a problem. Don't Don't let stuff bug you. Okay. Very good. Looking back, what was the biggest highlight of this seven night cruise for y'all? It's always perfect day. I just, I feel like it's so clean. They run it so well. I just love the water park area and love the island. So always a highlight for us. And final thoughts of Wonder of the Seas. Final thoughts. I think this ship is excellent for people who have kids. This is the ultimate family ship right now. If you are cruising with babies, toddlers, school age kids, or teens, there is something for everyone. Teens have their own, they have their own mocktail bar and their own hot tub on this ship. Nice. If you don't like cruising with kids, you might not want to go on this ship. There's a lot of children on it. It is obviously Royal Caribbean. We all know it is a family cruise line, but good to know. But it's awesome. It's a beautiful build. And I think that they did an incredible job. And I also came across your tips and tricks, Wonder of the Seas video. Sherry, where can we find that? Yeah, youtube.com forward slash cruise tips TV. Cool. I'll also link to it in the show notes at cruiseradio.net. Sherry, always a pleasure, my dear. Thanks, Doug. Hope to see you this year. Talk soon. A big question we get at Cruise Radio is, how do I know if I need trip insurance? 
simple answer. If you're getting on a plane, taking a road trip, or getting on a cruise ship, you need to have travel insurance. Hey, it's Doug Parker for my friends at TripInsurance.com. Not not only does TripInsurance.com protect your vacation investment, but it also gives you peace of mind in case anything were to go wrong on your trip. How do they do it? They offer three different types of trip insurance policies. Good, better, and best. One policy for every vacation budget. But it doesn't just stop there. They're up to 40% lower when you shop around on other comparison sites. Plus, TripInsurance.com offers 24-hour customer support before, during, and after your trip, online claims assistance, and travel alerts to let you know what's going on at your destination. But find out for yourself. Check out TripInsurance.com. All right, Dougie, let's see what we got for you, buddy. Cruise Radio is produced at the TripInsurance.com studios in Jacksonville, Florida. Get cruise news, ship reviews, and money-saving tips every Thursday on Cruise Radio. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the show. If you want to help spread the word, give Cruise Radio a five-star review. Find Cruise Radio where you listen to your favorite podcast or online at cruiseradio.net. I'm your announcer.